everyone, it's Dr. Mandy here and I'm here in the kitchen. It is my third day of fasting and for those of you who don't know, I do these little short little three-day fasts about twice a year. Um, it's just something I do to support my health. I'm not recommending everybody do this, but if you decide that it's for you, one of the best ways to break a fast is with a vegetable soup. So I'm going to demonstrate what I put in my fasting soup that I eat uh, on the first day, which I'm looking forward to because I'm doing it tomorrow and I'm literally counting down the hours. I got 12 more hours until I get to my goal of 86 hours of fasting. So what I've got here today, and I'm here with Terry. Hello. Who is my partner in crime. Come and show your face real quick. My Hello. partner in crime who supports my endeavors and also was helping me with chopping some of these vegetables. And he will be demonstrating chopping some of these herbs in just a moment. So what I've got here is broccoli, organic, of course, organic cabbage, that's a lot of cabbage. I don't know if it's gonna fit in there, but we'll try. I've got some carrots, or the full carrots. You can use baby carrots, but I we um, shave these off on the skin. And I've got some lactino kale. Remember, we're, I'm going for more of a low oxalate um, soup for myself. So I went with the lactino kale, which is lower in oxalates. And I am using a, a lot of onions because I'm an onion lover. And then we're using vegetable broth, organic low sodium. Yes, correct. And I am using herbs, cilantro and garlic. Oh, and let me not forget. Hikama. You like hikama, don't you? I do. He is, he's going to feed the gut bacteria right here. And a little bit of peppercorn. And spices you can do as you wish, okay? I love Indian spices. That's me. You don't have to. But I'm going to use some curry, and they all have various health benefits as well. Curry powder, I'm going to use a little bit of cumin seed. And, um, oh, there's two cumin seeds. Oh, there's the seeds, and then I also have the powder as well. So I have those in there, and I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. So we're gonna get started, but before we do, I wanna sh just go over uh, highlighting four different vegetables here and their health benefits real quick, it's just so you understand why I selected these. Okay, so to avoid boring you, I'm only gonna give you the quick highlight of all of these, and you can read the rest of it on my blog, how about that? So cabbage is really delicious, and a lot of times people walk right past it in the grocery store, but you shouldn't. You should walk right back to it because Cabbage is known to prevent bladder, prostate, and colon cancer. Ooh, it's broccoli, and I bet when you were a kid, you probably hated it because your parents made you eat it. Not anymore. Broccoli is packed full of nutrients, and let me tell you, it has something called isothiocyanate, which is known for cancer prevention and also inducing phase two detox antioxidant enzymes. Carrots are not just for Bugs Bunny. They're great for humans and contain vitamin A. In fact, they contain 93% of your daily value, but they also contain potassium, B6, C, vitamin Bs, and a little bit of vitamin E. And finally, it's Lactino kale, not the curly kale that you're used to. This is the straight leaf kale. I usually select this because of lower oxalate intake. Kale is a very good source of folate natural folate and if you want to activate it or enhance the bioavailability you're going to want to cook the kale here's a little hint little mustard seeds on it will bring out the sulforaphane of your kale so here's terry chopping the carrots and i can literally smell the carrots from here let me tell you guys something really interesting when you fast when you fast your sense of taste and also your sense of smell is heightened and so when I cook this overnight, which is part of my ritual, every time I fast, I cook it overnight and I will sm literally smell the aroma of these herbs and vegetables upstairs and it pulls me out of bed, doesn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Why do you think that is? I think it probably has something to do with the survival um, instinct. I think uh, when your body goes without food for several days, I think it's, your body has this natural ability to heighten your senses yeah. so that it can help you find food and they can also help you remember that you need food, which is probably why they they heighten those senses. I'll tell you, the vegetables taste always taste great to me, but after a fast, they taste amazing, amazing. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how to chop up cilantro so you can put it into your delicious soup. 
once you have taken the stems off the cilantro, you're going to be left with the leafy portions, just like this. And I take a chef knife. And the end result is very fine cut cilantro. Perfect for a soup. And that's how you do it. Okay, and now we're going to be doing a fine chop of the garlic as you're not going to want huge pieces. You're going to want very small, tiny pieces inside your soup. So it kind of just melts and you get the flavor of the garlic. Um, so what we've done here is already pre-peeled the garlic for you, which is the hard part. Um, now you're left with the uh, completely peeled garlic. You can actually buy peeled garlic in the store if you want. It makes it easier to come in a little bag. But um, I'm gonna show you a technique uh, called a, a fine chop. Oh, I can smell that. Oh yeah, you can already smell the aroma of the garlic. It's, it's really strong, and that's how you know you have good garlic too. Zoom in here, take a look. All right, thank you, that looks great. And here it is, this is your, this is your end result. And as you can see, my knife never really, on a fine chop, it never, it never left the board, the top portion of the knife. Um, so that's kind of how you do it. It's really super easy and um, you can definitely replicate this at home. Very simple. So now that we chopped everything up, I'm ready to put it in my crock pot dish. I'm gonna use a crock pot. Now you can use an Instapot, you can, but I don't think there's enough space in it, first of all. And honestly, I think that the crock pot's gonna be crunchier. From what I've experienced with the Instapot, the pressure cooker does tend to make it a little mushy. So all you do is you throw the veggies in there, you can layer it, it's totally fine to layer it. And um, there's the jicama, a little bit of the spice, uh, the herbs here, the garlic, a pinch of cilantro, a little bit of peppercorn, and then some kale. And you just keep layering it like this. Um, and don't forget that cabbage, quite a bit gonna fit but I'll try and I usually pack it all the way up and then I squeeze it down so pretty much that's all you're gonna do and then when you're done because I believe me I, I can literally eat the soup in over two days you'd be surprised I got the appetite for it um, this is what you're gonna pour in at the end and just pour it in until it's kind of at the not all the way at the top you know like right by the brim and that's it you're gonna turn it on um, I usually do it for eight hours so I'll do it probably when I go to bed and tomorrow morning I am going to come down like a zombie and I'm going to eat my soup at a god awful early hour. Oh. <laughs> All right, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Looking forward to it. So I am about four days in, 87 hours. Today is the day that I break my fast. And that soup sitting right there that I was making before is about to go in my belly. Um, how do I feel? Well, the fourth day is usually the most challenging. Um, restless the night before. I slept pretty well, but a little on the more restless side. Um, a little bit of heart palpitations, um, meaning that, you know, fatigue's easier, heart rate rises, which will persist a bit through the next few days as I refeed. That's totally normal. Uh, urine output is pretty good. Um, otherwise, body feels great. Don't feel inflamed. Um, a lot of the blemishes on my face have disappeared. I have a little bit of like food allergy related uh, blemishes. They've, they're they gone. So, you know, there is a lot of benefits to this. And I'm going to start with breaking this fast with a little bone broth to begin with. Make sure you break your fast with some bone broth and some apple cider vinegar. It will be the best way for your gut to get ready for your nice refeed. Enjoy. And here is the masterpiece, my soup. This is the final product. Yum.